Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Reselling Farming Mom. For those of you that don't know, my name is Ashley. Tonight I'm going to run through everything I sold throughout the week, as well as everything I'm shipping out tonight. And I'm going to tell you guys all about my thrifting sourcing experiences from this weekend. We hit up five different spots Friday and Saturday. That's a lot for us in two days. So let's get right to it. Okay, so first up, let's talk about life lessons. Last Sunday, I shot my video like I always do, and my husband wanted to try shooting it in 4K because it's got so much detail and so much definition. Well, we learned that shooting it in 4K may look great, but trying to get it uploaded onto the computer and rendering it and editing it was a whole nother story. It took him hours to do what should have only taken maybe 30 to 40 minutes. He ended up having to break my 28 minute video into two minute segments and mush it all together. He is super awesome at what he does for me. So you can hardly even tell. I think if you go and watch it, it's up on our YouTube channel. There's a couple glitches. He had to show them to me though, because I am not, you see the fuzzes? There's fuzzes flying. Um, I had, he had to show me where they were. I could not see them myself, but you guys are more than welcome to go check it out and see how awesome he did at editing my, all my video together last weekend. It took a couple extra days, but that's okay. He did awesome. So let's give a round of applause to the hubs and let's not make this video super hard for him to edit. I didn't put it in 4k. So that was all his idea, but I'm not the computer person. He definitely is. He's the one that keeps track of all our numbers. So thank you to him. This week, this week was a slower week, guys. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. I have been listing every day. I have not taken any days off. Granted, some days I only may list three items, but this slow spot is not stopping me. I am pushing through it. I'm going to keep listing listing, listing, and hopefully see some results. I sold five items today, or not today, five items sold yesterday. I've had none sell today. I'm not letting it get me down. I'm going to keep, to keep continuing to daily list, and hopefully we'll see some turnaround on that. It's February. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. So we're, I don't know if people are still bouncing back from Christmas. I'm not quite sure, but I've been watching other resellers and some say that January and February are their big months. So I know personally that October, November last year were my biggest months by far. January, we did quite well. So I gotta keep remembering it is a marathon, not a sprint. And to double this business up from last year, I just have to keep pushing through these times. As you can tell, we're gonna keep pushing. We sourced tons this weekend. But let me tell you what sold throughout the week. First, we had a vintage three cup enamelware coffee teapot kettle. It was blue with white speckles. It was super cute. The lid was attached. You just popped it. It sold for $12.50. I think this came in an auction hall for my dad, so I don't think I had any money into it. Sold for $12.50. Next was a vintage Mayanware China Tan in brown it was a teapot and a gravy boat i picked this up because it reminded me of restaurant wear i kind of tinkered in restaurant wear a little bit i've picked up i want to say maybe a dozen pieces or so of it i've had better luck flipping i have some white plates with blue on them i'm not sure the brand but i've sold those but this was the first time i'd picked up like a tea, little mini service for one teapot restaurant wear. I think I paid $6 for the pair of these. I accepted their offer at $12.95. I was okay with that. They'd been listed for quite some time. They were on one of the older shelves. So we still made a profit, not a huge profit, but it got something old off the shelf. So I was happy with that. Next was a cookbook. This is Skinny Bee in the Kitchass Kitchen paperback. This came out of our um, estate sale buyout. 
I listed almost, I think almost all the books that we got in the estate sale buyout. So I was pennies in on this. It sold for $3.20. The buyer paid shipping. Some of my books are listed at free shipping. Some aren't. It just depends on where I got them from. This one was the buyer paid the shipping. So I still turned a profit, a small profit, but it was there. A lot of these were smaller sales this week. Next was a vintage new old stock 1988 NASCARs Coors two-sided postcard with Bill Elliott in a Thunderbird. It was, I've actually sold more than one of these this week. It is, it looks like a postcard, but it's like also an informational card, like what maybe they would pass out at the NASCAR races. I've never personally been to a race, but I have quite a few of these. They're listed for $5.95 in my eBay store, Ashley's Thrifty Shop. If you're interested in one, please shoot me a message when you're sending me an offer and let me know that you follow me on YouTube and I'd be more than happy to work with you on the list price. They are listed at $5.95. This one, the buyer sent me an offer at $4 and I accepted it. It was free to me, so I just listed it at $5.95 because that's what almost all my paper products are listed at. So I will definitely work with you if you're interested in one. Next was a Sonoma Homestead deviled egg plate with rooster handles. It held 24 deviled eggs. I was happy to see this go, especially since Easter is right around the corner. I have a couple other deviled egg plates. I'm curious to see if they sell. Not like this one. This was the only one I had like this that was oblong. I paid $3 for it at the local Goodwill and I sold it for $18. Sonoma, I think is a Coles brand but it was cool it had the chickens on it and it was like a heavy like a stoneware so i was kind of nervous about shipping it but with this foam wrap i'm like i have so much more confidence i what i used to be really nervous about now i have a lot less nerves about actually sending it away with the postal person because the foam wrap is so great because it's not bubble wrap pops and the foam wrap doesn't pop I, i'm promoting this foam wrap because i love it Next, we had a vintage 1957 Thermos school lunch print ad. It was super cute. It had the little boy staring at his mom while she packed his lunch in his thermos. Um, free to me, I've had these magazines forever. As you know, I talked about um, dissecting these vintage magazines for the ads and selling just the ads. The ads are all listed at $5.95. Again, if you're interested in the ads that I have listed, just shoot me a message, send me an offer. I will work with you. This one, I accepted the buyer's offer at $4. I usually, I shoot a 5% offer on the ads just because they're listed at $5.95. And typically if somebody will counter me and I, I go for it, they're ads. It's a piece of paper. So I don't list them any higher than $5.95. I see quite a few ads on eBay sold are listed quite a bit higher than mine, but I just feel like it's a piece of paper. I don't like to go much lower than three to four dollars just because of how much goes into actually shipping it because you have to have it plastics and double-sided with cardboard and then you have to get that in and when I start getting into the larger 10 by 13 and a half ads it's actually it takes a lot of time and when you think about the fees that you're paying on top of the money you're making I'm putting a lot of effort into just a dollar or two which kind of it's just it doesn't work out so if you are interested in my ads Try, let's stay with above three dollars. I prefer four and up, but I will definitely work with you, especially if you buy multiples. So, next is a CD. This is the only CD I've ever bought to sell, or and it worked. This was a legendary Merle Haggard. I paid this, or I paid fifty cents for this at a yard sale over the summer. It sold for four and a half dollars. Not a huge profit, but the profits there. Um, it was the only CD I saw there. I like Merle Haggard. The year my son was born, Merle Haggard died, and I wanted to name my son Merle. I his the plan was to name him Mason all along. His name is Mason. My great grandfather bottled Mason root beer, and everyone kept making fun and teasing, calling him Mason root beer. And I was over it. I was done. And I said, the next person that does it, I will name him Merle and I will have no regrets. So 
I never heard the jokes ever again and my son is named Mason, but in my heart, I always know he was gonna be a Merle, so. Next was a vintage Gulf Oil Corporation ad and hence why the rant on the $3 and up because this was a full page print ad free to me because I took it out of my magazines, sold for $3 and it took me a while to get the cardboard trimmed down. So just to the right size so it would fit in the poly. So let's keep it three and up guys. Thanks. <laughs> Cheesing myself out. All right, we have two more and then we're gonna talk about these thrift finds. Next was a set of five Corning Corral Morning Blue Floral. They were six and three quarter inch bread salad plates. They were really pretty. They were the smallest size curl plate round, but they were white with a blue floral trim. They were super adorable. They sent me a heartfelt message. I accepted their offer. Uh, two and a half dollars in, sold for $10. A lot of my older Corel, I've been going down to $10 for a set of four. This was a set of five, but they were very small plates. I actually attempted to run a Corel sale on Whatnot last night. I don't know <laughs> what went wrong. There, I've not seen anybody run Corel sales, but I've also never seen one run vintage ad sales. I did that last weekend. This weekend, I ran Corel. I sold one set. It was my sister-in-law. I don't know if that counts, but she stuck it out with me for the whole 45 minutes I went, so kudos to her, but they didn't go, so they're still up, listed on eBay. A lot of them are on sale, so make sure you go check it out. Some of the better patterns are not but I have quite a few vintage patterns. So if you're interested in upping your collection, make sure you go check it out. There, most of them are on sale. And then last but not least was a vintage, well, it's not vintage, but it's a hot pink V-neck sweater with a lace cami sewn in. This was out of the estate sale buyout. That's where almost all their clothes came from. This one sold for $4.95. I was okay with that because I was pennies in and the most all the clothes are already polyed or in clear poly bags. So all I have to do is ship, throw them in the poly mailer. So $4.95, it got it out. I was good with that. So let's talk about this thrift night slash day I had with my husband and my kiddo. It was so great. Friday night, we left the house. We hit up the local Goodwill, and then we drove a couple towns over to another Goodwill, kind of in a different direction than we normally go. We picked up some pretty awesome stuff. I, well, that was what we did Friday night. And then Saturday, we hit up, I made a, there was a Goodwill, a thrift store, and we found an indoor garage sale to go to, guys. So I'm gonna show you some of the pieces that I got. I can't tell you where all of them came from because there was so much, but some of them I do remember. So we found an indoor garage sale and they actually ran this garage sale two weeks ago and I didn't get to go to it, but then they opened it back up and just like bottom dollared everything was 50 cents. So I think I spent $16. I got tons of stuff, but I pulled these because I thought they were super cool. I wanted to show you. I got three of them. I, okay, so there's one more. These are fr marked Francoma pottery mugs. I was super excited about this. I've only ever bought Francoma one other time. I had a red vase that sold. It, it had a spotlight in a YouTube video over the summer. But they are marked Francoma. I did not look anything up I bought at the yard garage sale. But I did kind of, I just looked up Frank Coma mugs and I noticed that ones that had different kinds of handles did better. So I was super excited that mine had like the little heart handle. So a dollar fifty on three mugs. It's that's goodwill prices. I can do something with that. So and then we picked up Corel. I don't always only pick up Corel, but I want to show you these. Super good deal. There was there's eight of these little dips. And then I, there was six other dips. They were a different brand. They were not Corel. I actually, I'm going to just take them upstairs and use them because they're not Corel. So I'm not even going to try to flip them because the, most of them are unbranded. But these were a super good buy. And then Libby. I did not even know this was a thing. I like to buy Libby glass, but I bought some Libby color impressions glasses new in the box. 
And then the next day I found these not in the box, but I knew exactly what they were. These are Libby color impressions. I bought the tumbler size and then this is like the smaller drink size. These go for like $30 pre-owned guys. So if you see these as a set of four pre-owned, they sell pretty well. I looked up the sold comps. Another awesome find that we had was, I bought these Barney figurines. They're all in the bag. I don't know a lot about Barney stuff, but ever since I see Southern Ohio picker picking up Barney stuff all the time. So if I can find vintage Barney stuff cheap enough, I buy it and then I look it up later. So thank you for that. Another thing we always watch out for now is these Mr. Coffee iced tea makers. If you don't, guys don't know about this, make sure you're watching out for them. Mr. Coffee iced tea makers sell anywhere from like 18 to $24 which might not sound like a lot, but I picked this up for $1.50. So, and if you have the picture that goes with it, you can do even better. And I'm pretty sure you can sell the picture just by itself as well. And then look at these beauties. These are also Libby. They have like the overstated L on the bottom. Look at the gold leaf on these. I picked up four of them there was a fifth one but it had a huge chip in it and what's even better is I looked them up because I could I was at the Goodwill and they had two dollars on each glass and I was like but glasses are 50 cents and the, I was willing to pay two dollars a piece for them and the girl was like glasses are 50 cents you're not paying two dollars a glass so I was like thank you so and then last but not least we picked up these bad mummer jammers, PJ masks, not one, but two. Look how huge they are, guys. We always check out the plushes now because they might take up a lot of space, but they're so light and they're so easy to ship. Um, we got these for a dollar a piece at the thrift store and they're clean, no rips or tears. And there was a little boy and he tried, like he came up to my cart and he scowled at me and I was okay. Like I, I took them out of my cart and I gave them to him and his dad brought them back and put them in my cart. And I wasn't okay with that at all. So I made my husband go stand in line and try to buy them. But by the time, like my husband couldn't even get through the line because the guy in front of him had like $114 worth of stuff. In this thrift store, everything is practically 50 cents or under so 114 dollars worth is a lot and the man had already taken his son out of the store and I felt really bad but I was really gonna give these away I was gonna buy them and give them away but I couldn't so now they're here with me in the basement so that's what I got this weekend let's talk about what I am shipping out tonight it's a hodgepodge let me tell you so first was, I sold the Beer Wolf mirror. This mirror, let me tell you, it broke my heart. I got it out of the package. I received it brand new because all of the beer memorabilia was free to me for the time being. The Beer Wolf mirror was the mirror I was the most excited to open. And it was the one I was most disappointed when I opened it. It had a crack from here to here it's been sitting in my basement for I want to say eight months because I didn't know what to do with it I just kept looking at it and I did put it in a whatnot sale a couple times but I just had had to keep explaining that it was broken over and over every time I panned it so finally I just stopped and then, then again it just sat not doing anything so a couple weeks ago, I listed it on eBay and I very plainly said, please read as is, read description, review pictures. And I explained that there was a crack in it. I showed pictures very clearly where the crack was in it and I sold it super discounted because this is supposed to be a high dollar mirror and I sold it for $25. The buyer paid the $25 I was asking for it, which I was really thankful for. Um, but as you can see, it goes from here to here. But like I was telling my husband that this mirror, it's for $25, some 
somebody's going to take it home and hang it in their garage up on a wall like this. And unless you know it's there, you're not going to see it. So I'm happy that it's going to go somewhere and be appreciated. And maybe they can fill it, me fill it in and have less worries with it. I, I'm going to tape it, I think, when I ship it. So don't discount things that are broken, guys. If it's a super high dollar item, somebody wants it. Um, there's a collector out there or someone that's just beginning or someone that wants to fill in that they're going to buy it. I remember picking up so much yellow Federal Madrid depression glass at an auction about a year ago. And I got a really good deal on it. And I got it home and I figured out why I got such a good deal on it is because the glass, most of it was chipped. A lot of it was unsellable for me on eBay because it was really heavy glass and I wasn't trying to sell really heavy chipped glass. So I ended up piling all of the chipped glass in a box and I actually sold it on Facebook Marketplace as craft glass because there's a lot of people around here. I don't know in your areas, but a lot of people around here like to hot glue fancy glass together and make bird feeders and waterers out of it and stuff. It's not my thing, but it's other people's things. So people look for that stuff. So if you have a pile of it, you might be able to sell it. Not as just one piece, but as multiple pieces. You just never know. So that's my rant about broken things need love too. <laughs> I told you guys we sold two of these. I sold another one of the Bill Elliott NASCAR postcards, information cards. They're in excellent condition. It's, I think, a 5 by 7 This one sold for $5.95. And then we sold the Vintage Home Co. White Porcelain Figurine, the Mama Cat and the Baby Cats. I think I paid 4 or $5 for this. I thought it was going to be worth more. It's on me. I picked it up while I was in Allen last weekend antiquing with grandma I really thought because it was the cats I really need to learn to stop picking up home co no matter how cute I think it is not to pay for it um I paid four dollars for it I sold for $8.95 I still made a profit but not very much so learn from my mistakes don't pick it up Next was these vintage 101 Dalmatians Penny Plush Mattel. Look at her. And she's got her little tag all in there. I think I pick, paid a dollar for her at Funk's Junk. I either paid 50 cents or a dollar. I'm not sure because we just had this huge mountain of stuff and then we just paid the price. And they said everything was a dollar a piece or 10 for five. But by the time we had accumulated a mountain, I had no clue how they were keeping track of how much we spent. So I just paid the lady and I either paid 50 cents or a dollar. She sold for $6. She's been listed for quite a while. I picked her up because she was Disney and she was, essentially she was new in the package. I had to take her out of the package to take pictures because the package just wasn't doing her justice. But if you can get them cheap enough, I... I think if you had more, I think there was more in the set that it would do better. So, but bread and butter sales, they keep you going, guys. They keep you going. And the last sale, oh my gosh, this thing weighs a million pounds, was a Sizzix personal die cutter and system converter. Ready? <sighs> okay. So, there we go. There's the system. Like, the die cutter itself is this and this and the system converter is there's this little magnetic thing right here i picked this up at the local goodwill i paid ten dollars for it it came with two sets of dies and the converter and the die cutter itself i bought it because i wasn't sure if i wanted to use it or if i wanted to sell it they had a pretty good sell-through rate when I picked it up though, the rates were a little bit high. Like what it was selling at was a little bit higher. But when I listed it, they were only selling for like $20, which I was kind of really disappointed. So 
I listed mine at 20 and someone sent me an offer at 15 and I jumped, I jumped on it because of how heavy it is. I was thankful that someone wanted to buy it. And also since I had the two dies listed that also came with it, there's a little room for more profit. I was happy it sold, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if I was going to try to use it because I got heart dies and balloon dies. And I do a lot at church. So I was like, maybe hearts or balloons. I don't know. But no, I sold it. I really would, am thinking hard about a cricket though. So let me know what you think about crickets because I keep having to tell myself no, but in my mind, I'm saying yes. So that's all I've got for tonight, guys. Um, make sure that you are going and checking out the Ashley's Amazon Steals on Facebook. We just got approved for tons of promo deals, guys. My husband has been posting 10 to 15 items a day of 60 to 80% off regular price. I mean, I'm getting awesome deals on stuff. So I know you guys can too. But with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful week and... Make sure you stay tuned for our plant update video. We filmed that and it's going to be going live this week as well. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe.